Hey everybody, Steve here again. Uh, last time we left off with um, measuring the angle of the engine and it being quite a bit off uh, with it being angled too much this way, back end down. Um, I, 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 I want to get that fixed before I go any farther. It's, it's really important um, that I do that. The geometry of the um, drive shaft transmission and the rear end is pretty important to make sure the car hooks good. I spent a lot of time with the old setup uh, getting this thing to not wheel hop and with a four length suspension like this has it's easy to do because the pinion gear wants to ride up the ring gear when you jump on it and it wraps up the rear suspension and then it wraps it up and then it releases and that's what gives you your wheel hop in the back. So what I've done is I want to lower the front of the engine. Simple as that. Um, and I will show you what I bought to try to do that. So here's what I purchased. I bought a new oil pan. It's a Holly. It's unfortunately twice as expensive as the GM muscle car pan. Uh, it's like 350 bucks, unfortunately. But what it does is it's got this cut down in the front um, for it to clear the cross member. I can drop the motor down. I have room to drop the motor down farther. Now how I'm going to do that is I bought another set of motor mounts. That's what these are. Uh, from Dirty Dingo again. Um, I don't know if, if you saw the earlier videos. What I put on there were slider mounts, which were two of these plates together that you could slide, um, you could slide back and forth to get the right um, setback on the motor. I'm within an eighth of an inch of one of the stock holes on these non-slider mounts, but what it allow me to do is I don't have to stack two pieces of steel. Therefore, I only have one in underneath the motor mounts and uh, so the motor will drop down. If it doesn't drop down enough with that, I'm going to go back to the old motor mounts, which were uh, 3 eighths of an inch lower um, this way than, um, than what the ones okay, are. Okay, so I pulled the engine, um, we took the oil pan off. I just want to show you the difference here between these two pans. So the one on the right is what was on the car. That's the GM muscle car pan. The one on the left is a new Holly pan. See the difference here? How much, um, how thin this is here compared to hair. So now I'll be able to have more room to lower the engine. Uh, the other big difference on this pan is the sump area. It is much higher on the Holly pan from this direction. Um, I've measured, I should have enough clearance for the cross member. Uh, we're gonna put the pan on and we'll so find I'm out. We're gonna put the pan on to give us more space and room in the front, but the way we're gonna drop it is by changing these motor mounts here. These were the Dirty Dingo slider mounts and there's two plates um, that make them real thick. So I'm gonna take that off, put on the single plate ones and put it back in the car and see what happens. Okay, we tried putting the motor back in. Um, I picked up about an eighth of an inch and bringing the front of the motor down, uh, which is not enough. Um, so we're going to try those other mounts. Um, I'll show you the difference, uh, kind of a reminder from earlier videos what the difference in the, is in the two mounts. Okay, so here are the two mounts. These are the ones that were on there. Okay. And just from the back of the bottom of the hole to the back of the plate, it's about two inches. These are the old mounts that I've taken off because I wanted to boost the engine up to have clearance on the cross member with the old pan, but with the new pan, I should have more clearance. So here's the old mounts from the bottom of the hole to the back plate. It is inch and a half. So we should be able to drop the motor a half inch, which hopefully won't be too much. All right, we got the other mounts on. We put the engine in. It is uh, definitely sitting lower than before. And you can see I have the level on the front, if you remember, that's how we were measuring it before. So uh, we're going to measure it and double check. Right. Um, the measurement we were trying to get to was one and seven eighths of an inch from the level down to the center of the, of the crank bolt. And then let's get the level put in place here. Now, Marcus, go back. Or, yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. Let's check it here. And. I'd say we're very, very close. I think that'll do it. 
So what we did was we lowered the engine by taking off the double thick slider plate mounts, putting on just a single plate, and then using those lower or uh, shorter motor mounts. That seems to be the key. The only way I was able to do that is with that holly pan because it has the um, because it's got that it's shallower in the front. It is really close to the cross member. I have um, oh at the most a quarter inch, probably closer to three sixteenths of an inch clearance on this side here. Uh, but it's it clears. I think it'll be fine. And this puts the driveline geometry all in the right place and everything. I'm very very happy with this. The other thing I'm going to check is the steering linkage because it was hitting the old pan. I'm wondering now, when you went lock to lock, I'm wondering now if it clears. I thought maybe with the new pan, I would have um, it would maybe clear, but it doesn't. You can see there it still hits. Um, but I'm wondering, there's a big lip on that pan. If I could just grind that down in that area, and maybe it would clear because it's just hitting the lip. So possible. If not, it's no worse than what it was before. Let's try the wheel steered the other way, see if it clears. So I have the wheel steered the other way, and look at that. It clears. See that there? It clears. It goes right under the pan. It clears everything. It's really nice. So if I use this pan and kept the engine up, everything would clear. But I'd rather sacrifice the steering the one direction a little bit. Um, and get all this other driveline geometry in place and shifter in the right location and all that. So what I did, since we lowered the motor about a half inch, uh, I wanted to make sure that the accessory drive and everything cleared the steering box. So I put the EllisBrackets.com um, accessory brackets back on, put the power steering box in. As you can see, that power steering pulley, uh, it's a lot closer, but still plenty of clearance. It'll be fine. Real happy with that. I also put the headers back on, no problem there. What so here's a combination that worked for me. Start from the back going forward. Stock cross member for the transmission. I think everything's fine there. I used the Dirty Dingo, um, not the slider plates, but just the conversion plates um, for the uh, conversion for, for the engine mounts. I used the tall frame stands for the engine mounts and then use the low but wide motor mounts that go to the frame stands. What that allowed me to do is get that front of that engine down and the holly pan allowed me clearance to do that. Now there's a bit of a spacing issue with those wider lower mounts on the tall skinny frame stands but not a big deal. A couple of washers in there is going to take care of the spacing or I may machine a nice spacer at work, I don't know. Um, and then I was able to get with uh, with those engine mounts, and with the again the oil pan allowed me to do this to get that engine back just a little bit more. So everything's in the correct location front to back. Shifter comes up to the hole in the floor, no cutting up the floor anymore. My drive shaft's going to work because the length will be correct because I have the front to back location of the engine good. You know, the power steering box and the lsbrackets.com accessory drive all fit even with the lowered engine. Fantastic day. I am really confident that this thing is in the right spot now. Take the time, everybody. Do this stuff and, and just make sure you get those this basic stuff correct. Because I believe down the road it will make things just so much easier. So the next thing is basically we're going to yank the motor out because it's I'm done with doing the test fitting of it and then I'm going to rip apart the front end and do the Global West conversion that will hopefully be the next set of videos. Stay tuned.